And welcome back to Charlie Fitz Whiskey's here in Vaughan, Ontario, where we're talking football with Uncle Ben of UncleBensFootball.com. He's at his home office in San Diego, California. And Ben, I want to uh, ask you a little bit about the one player who I think is standing out above and beyond every single player in the NFL. I'm referring, of course, to the quarterback with the 4-0 Denver Broncos, Peyton Manning. Right now, is there any doubt whatsoever that he's the MVP in the league? I don't see how anyone could argue that point, Marty. I mean, you look at this team, they're just blowing out opponents. I think they've won most of their games by 20 or more points, uh, which is, it's not a college football league, but he's making it appear to be that. Yeah. This man, I think he's thrown 16 interceptions with nary, uh, I mean, excuse me, 16 touchdowns with nary an interception. So, I mean, it's, it's unheard of numbers and unheard of territory that he's entering right now, and especially for a player at his age. It's not like he's, you know, a five-year guy who's had a little experience, and now he's starting to figure it out. And who this missed a year with major surgery. The guy missed a year with major surgery. Now, that's a big comeback. You know, they took a bit of a chance, okay? John Elway and him obviously had a marriage there in, uh, in, in the Mile High City. And I just feel that this guy is completely in control. He's, uh, he's basically the offensive coordinator for the Denver Broncos. I mean, yeah. Mike McCoy, Mike McCoy wouldn't be coaching the San Diego Chargers today if it wasn't for Peyton Manning, okay, because he was the offensive coordinator last year with the Broncos, and now he's got a head coaching job here, right here in my in my backyard here in San Diego, and he's loving that Mike McCoy, and he's done a good job with the offense down here, and he's installed, I think Mike McCoy learned more from Peyton Manning than Peyton Manning learned from Mike McCoy, but anyway... I just see this team is on a, in a, on a roll. I do like the Denver Broncos this week. We'll get to that later. But I, I don't see how you can, if I had a win section again, it's write a streak. One of my things is write a streak. Streaks only end one time, Marty, right? So I say ride the Peyton Manning train all the way to the bank. Minus seven this week against the Dallas Cowboys. Like I said, we'll get into that later, but I guess you know where I'm going well, with that. Well, actually, Uncle Ben, let's get to it now because the, uh, the uh, Broncos are seven point favorites in Dallas. Uh, I thought Tony Romo et al. were absolutely awful against the Chargers where you are right now in San Diego last week. And uh, they get to go back home now. It's the Broncos favored by seven against the Cowboys. Who do you like in this game? Well, I think I just sort of tipped my hat there because I do like the Denver Broncos, okay? I mean, like I said, the Broncos have won games, I think, by 22, 18, 16, and 32 points. Uh, thus far, and like I said, uh, Denver's using the same offense as San Diego because McCoy's gone over, right? But uh, San Diego doesn't have really the weapons that Denver has. They don't play as good as defense uh, as Denver does, and I don't think they have the second half like Denver's just blowing teams out in the second half. San Diego won by nine last week yeah. okay, against Denver, I mean against Dallas. I do think that, you know, I just think that winners cover. I don't see the Dallas Cowboys winning this game. The Dallas Cowboys are an 8-8 eight eight ball club, in my opinion, 9-7 and seven in the horrible NFC uh, East. And I just see the Denver Broncos winning this ball game. I'm going to ride the Peyton Manning train, like I said, right to the bank until they lose a ball game against the spread. They've covered every spread. They've won, I think, 15 regular season ball games in a row. Okay, They did lose last year in the playoffs to Baltimore, as everybody knows, but they've won 15 regular season ball games in a row. I like the Denver, uh, I like the Denver Broncos minus 7. You know, it's interesting, Ben, because I made the mistake last week of, of going against you in one game, the Monday night game. I thought Miami was going to put up a good fight in New Orleans. They didn't. They were absolutely brutal, in fact, the Dolphins were. And the Saints covered easy. You were absolutely correct about the Monday night game. But I'm going to, maybe against uh, good advice, I'm going to go against you on one more game this week. That is the Dallas-Denver game. I kind of like Dallas. I don't know why, but I know Denver looks like they are absolutely uh, a juggernaut, as you mentioned. But I just have a feeling that I, I don't know. I like the Cowboys. I like the Cowboys at home as can an underdog. That's it. Do you, can, can I ask you a little question? Do you sure. think Dallas is going to win the ball game? I knew you were going to ask that, and, and here we go because that make, makes such good, it's a very sensible question after what you told us at the top of the show. 
and that is that the winners have covered 30 consecutive times in the NFL. Therefore, if I'm taking Dallas, I should have to expect that Dallas is going to win the game outright. I can't do that, Ben. I don't know. I don't want to bet the game myself. I'm not, I would never do it. I can't do it. I, can't, I do not think Dallas will win the game outright, but I somehow think it will stay within a field goal in Dallas, which completely defies the odds and everything you told us about. I know. So you can give me hell if you want, but I, just well, can't, well, I can't lay uh, seven points on the road with Denver in Dallas. Well, what I'd have to say about that is the odds are in your favor a little bit because, it's, like I said, it's running about 85.5% right now, which is a little high. Okay, It runs between 80 and 82 normally. So, you know, you do have a slight 3% chance working in your favor there. Thank but you. Thank you. I, feel that, <laughs> I feel that Peyton Manning relishes these, these national TV situations. This is going to be a 4 o'clock uh, game here on the East Coast, 1 o'clock on the West Coast. Because, you know, on the West Coast, the games come on earlier. Already at 10 o'clock in the morning, and the audiences at 10 o'clock in the morning on Sunday, I might add, after a Saturday night in California, you know, they're a little little slow out of the gate here, let's say, at 10 yeah. o'clock in the morning. But by 1 o'clock in the afternoon, you know, that's a nationally televised game. Peyton Manning relishes those situations. And I think that against the America's team, he, he I think he's, he just likes to put it to, put you know, he just would like to, you know, put another nail in the coffin to say, I'm the best. And I, I just like the Denver Broncos to win this game, and like I always say, winners cover. All right. Well, you know what, folks? Don't listen to me. You got Uncle Ben here, and Uncle Ben's telling you, take the Broncos on the road minus the seven, and he's not wrong very often. So I would just, I would, I would, I'm laying off that game. It's not one of your top three picks, anyways. Ben, uh, let's talk about teams. Well, it is on my website, though. You see there, I just gave you, I just gave you, it is on my website. Not just my top three picks. There are more selections on my website. So if you want all of those selections, you have to go and subscribe to UncleBensFootball.com. Absolutely. Uh, let's see now. Well, I wanted to discuss with you uh, teams that are underachieving and overachieving. We've had four games now in the season to determine who's doing better than they, we thought they would and who's doing worse than we thought they would. Let's start with the overachievers first, uh, Ben. Give us a couple of, the, of your teams that you think are overachieving. Well, I have to go back to Monday Night Football. I think the Miami Dolphins have definitely overachieved. And I think they're going to have a problem this week again against the defending champion uh, Baltimore Ravens, especially after Baltimore looked pretty poor last week against Buffalo, throwing five interceptions. Joe Flacco did a loser, by the way, yeah. on my site last week at UncleBensFootball.com. We had the Baltimore Ravens last week. Wow. And, uh, you know, I think they're just good, you know, to see Joe Flacco perform that way two weeks in a row, I don't think it's going to happen. I would be wary if you like the Miami Dolphins this weekend. Miami is typically a very poor team at home. Yeah. I can tell you, they are. So I think they've overachieved, and I think the Kansas City Chiefs have overachieved, okay, also. Yes. I mean, I, I think the Kansas City Chiefs are a much better ball club. Certainly, they only won two ball games last year. Not hard to do better. But do you think they're this – Ben, do you think they're this good 4-0? I mean, are they no. this good? No. No, I don't. I don't. But I do think they've got a good chance of winning this week. I do. Who um, it? uh, it's not on my service. They're going the, – the Chiefs are going to play Tennessee. Uh, Jake Locker, um, yeah, he's you hurt. know, it's a tough, really tough break, Marty, for uh, the Titans. You know, they really had – maybe maybe Jake Locker was trying to – finally starting to figure it out a bit. Yes, you know, I think he was. Four, four games. You know, they had a tough loss to Houston in the last play of the game, basically, or they could, you know, they could be better off. And now, you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick this week. Like, I think Kansas City's going to win probably again this week, but I still think they've overachieved. They haven't really played any hard teams yet. And I think that Andy Reid's going to suffer some defeats in, up in the next few weeks. And the last team I think is overachieved is another team that's done well, the Chicago Bears. I think, and it's interesting to get your take because Mark Trestman, I mean, because you know Mark Trestman very well. Yes, Andy. I do. Okay, so I just think the Bears showed some of their – they had every break in the book. Their defense is fantastic, no denying that. They've had – I think they were plus like 11 turnovers in the first three games or something. Last week they turned the ball over, I think, five times. Did even out a bit last week. But they still only lost by eight points to Detroit. But what do you think is going to happen with the Chicago Bears? I'm interested to hear your take. It's interesting. I was going to volunteer it anyway. I love the Bears this week. It's a pick em game, and the Saints – to me, are coming off a high uh, Monday night football. They're having a short week of rest. I love, love, love the Bears at home this week. That is one that I definitely would recommend 
but I'm not you, Ben. Who do you like in this game? You're the man. Well, I'm looking for actual game winners, Marty, as you know. I look at ball games and I, I look at the spread only as an indicator of how the odds makers want you to think about a ball game, but I really don't look at it as who's going to win the ball game. Now, this spread uh, bears by three, I believe it is. Oh, right? I got I got to pick them in that game, as I just oh, said. Pick them? Oh, okay. So now I see people are people are obviously betting the New Orleans Saints, and the New Orleans Saints are one of the. I got a phone going off here, guys, and that's not good. I guess, huh? That, that's probably uh, Peyton, the coach of the Saints, saying, "Take me." Okay, take me. I apologize for that. <laughs> um, I think the New Orleans Saints are one of the finer teams in the NFC this year. I think it could be possibly an NFC Championship game for them against the Seattle Seahawks. But this game here, and New Orleans has had good success in Chicago, by the way. I don't see a clear-cut winner, though. I'm looking for actual game winners. That's what I was driving at before we had this interruption with the phone. Okay? Actual game. All right, we're having some technical issues right now with Skype, so... We'll take a little break, and when we return, Uncle Ben comes back to us. Don't go away. Oh. 